most pituitary tumors are, um, are not genetic in that they don't transfer from generation to generation, but they are due to abnormalities in the genes. In other words, uh, something's gone awry with the normal machinery by which the cell con it controls itself. So uh, in, uh, in all likelihood, if once the tumor is removed and if someone decides to make um, um, uh, an analysis of that tumor, they might find some abnormalities in the molecular structure of, the, of that cell or cells. So that's true. Very few tumors of the pituitary uh, occur in syndromes, which means they're inherited from uh, generation to generation. They are a few, but they're very rare. Most are sporadic. In other words, they're the lock of the draw, if you will. So Generally, you, didn't, you didn't do anything. No, in general you don't. And you, it's not like you smoked too much or drank too much or slept too little or slept too much. It's just one of those things that happens. At this point, we don't think that patients with pituitary tumors have had any different ways of living that put them at risk for death. So just to be clear, there, I, we don't know of any type of um, habits that one might have that would lead to formation of a pituitary tumor. But I think it is extremely important for everybody who lives with a chronic condition, especially that involves hormonal abnormalities, to be very well aware of how powerful these lifestyle modifications are in, in increasing quality of life and gaining some control of your, your body and, and brain.